Hi everybody, it's Oksana. Today I'm going to show you how to make this pendant right here. It's a cabochon pendant. Here is the front of it and here is the back. And if you want to support me so I can keep making these free tutorials for you, just click on the little eye right there. So let's get started. Starting out with pretty large pieces. This is 20 gauge copper dead soft wire. I'm using bare copper because I want to oxidize it. This is about 10 inches. Um, and my stone is actually pretty small. So if you have um, a larger stone, then you want to use even more wire. But what I'm doing is I am estimating, like if I were to put the stone right in the center, there'd be like this much wire that goes up the side of it. So I'm going to hold on to right here. This is where I'm going to start my weave. I'm kind of estimating where my weave's going to start here so that I can have it go around the stone and have it be centered. So I'm using um, 26 gauge wire for my weaving wire. And you can just do whatever pattern you prefer. And you can use more than three wires. Um, I think most stones might require more than three wires if they're deep. Uh, but my stone is pretty small and it's not super flat, but I think that it'll be okay. Like the three wires will cover the edge of it good enough. Uh, so I'm putting my wire through, holding the tail, and I'm just doing a pattern. I'm going to do the one that is one loop around the bottom two, one loop around the top two, one loop around the bottom two, and then four loops around the very bottom wire. One, two, three, four. So here is what that pattern looks like. And I'm just gonna do that until I have enough of it to be able to bend it around my stone. So I'll put my, I'll put, you know, this at the center of the weave and I'll bend it around the stone so that my weave meets up again at the top but I don't want it to be too long because I don't want that window to be so wide that my stone pops out of it. I want to be able to bend it around and secure it tight and have it be like a little frame around my stone that's just slightly smaller so that my stone can't come through it. Alright so I started kind of shaping it around my stone to make sure that my little frame is a good size and by the way you can use any shape of stone you want. I just happen to be using a marquee little labrador right here. So now I'm taking the innermost wire on each side and I am crossing them over and this is easier to do on a flat surface but I have to hold this in the air so you can see And you want to cross them over and bring it to the back. You can kind of mess around with them later in terms of the, the little crossover part being perfect and everything, but This is our frame that is going to go around our stone. And my stone um, does not fall through it. It's smaller than the size of my stone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm coming right here in the back. First of all, let me get this weaving wire just out of the way so I'm, I'm pulling it here so it just continues we can do the bail with it in a minute now I'm using a, a pick like this you can maybe even use a toothpick and right here if you'll notice I'm just picking kind of two central uh, wires that I can bend back so right here and right next to it right here so I'm sticking my little pick in there. 
So I'm just kind of gently pushing my pick in there until it gets out all the way. Be careful you don't stab yourself. And then I'm taking my wire. So my wires are crossed over. Now this wire is on this side, this wire is on the side. So I'm taking the wire of the corresponding side and I'm putting it through that little gap, so to speak, that I made. And I'm doing the same thing on the other side. Now at some point you do want to put your stone in there. So it's kind of bent out of shape, but I am I'm gonna try to Okay, so this is the direction that I want to have my stone, so I'm putting that in. I'm pulling this wire tight. And then this other wire. That's right. Um, I'm putting it through that other little gap. And you probably want to use your pliers <laughs> to make it nice and tight and just tighten it all up so now you have two wires coming out the front this one's actually rather short um, I think it's still long enough so that's good yeah because I just wanted to go up the side but this one's a little longer so I guess my little weave wasn't perfectly centered in the middle but I want these these are gonna go on the side like this so they just have to be long enough to reach so let's do our bail next and then we can come back to those two wires so that should hold your stone in And um, if you feel like it's wobbly or something, take your pliers and just kind of tighten these wires up. But for my bail, let me make sure my wires are not crooked here. I'm just doing the ladder weave. I have a video on that um, style of weaving. There we go. But basically, the way that it goes. So you do one loop over the top wire, bring it over both, go under and loop around just the bottom one, go through this giant gap in the middle, bring it under to the other side, over the bottom wire, over both bottom wires, bring it in between them and over just the top one of the bottom two wires, bring it back to the other side, and repeat top both bottom through the gap underneath whenever you're bringing it to the other side you always want to go under this way so I, um, I will link my video in case you need like in case you didn't catch this and you need to watch it um, again but that is what I'm gonna do for my bail until this is long enough for it to be a bail all right so I cut my weaving wire and I'm done with this for now. I'm just going to kind of separate these out a tiny bit like this so this doesn't move. So here's what you need to do next. Um, we're basically doing a coiled coil and I have a video on this just like how to make one. Um, I am going to walk you through it a little bit here but if it's not enough you know baby steps then I do have um, another video on it which I will link below. Basically, what you need to do is you need to make a coil. This is a coil that I made using 26 gauge wire. And I actually did this on the coiling gizmo because I happen to have one, but you don't need one. You can just manually, you know, coil um, around a base wire. Uh, but what I did because I have a coiling gizmo, it's like a metal rod and it makes coiling a little quicker, but then you have to remove the coil 
and put it on your wire. So I have 22 gauge wire right here. And in terms of measurement, the coil, you so we want ultimately what we make to go the length of this side. So you want your very original coil to be about three times this distance here. And then the wire that you put it on, you want it to be twice the size of this coil. So you can see I have a lot of extra here. And I like to overestimate, like maybe this is a little too long, but I would rather it be too long than too short, you know. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I can fit my wire here, this 22 gauge wire, through this gap just because there's still room in there. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to hold it. And then you might need to kind of like push on this. The problem is we're going to coil this around this wire here, but what happened is this might start like sliding on you. So you want to either like hold it down with your finger or something. Once you make that first little loop, it's kind of better. It doesn't slide around as much. But see how it, it kind of slid around on me a tiny bit there. And I don't want, I don't want there to be a gap. Okay. So I'm going to try and hold that with my thumb as I coil. Sorry if you can't see that. We're just wrapping this. And as you do this, you want to bend this wire. to see if it is long enough. So almost, we're almost there at the top. And you can see I'm kind of running out of base wire there anyways. So pretty much the perfect amount of coil. Yep, so that reaches right, right up to the top. So I'm going to do that on the other side as well. So right here on the back, like once you have this long enough and you have it right up the side, my little base wire here is pretty short so I don't need to cut it. I'm just going to grab the little tip of it and I'm going to put it, I don't know if you can see that, right in there. So it's going to be like underneath this wire here and I'm using my round nose pliers because it kind of makes like a little hook, hooking it around so to speak. And on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to have to cut that wire. But this wire is already so short that I really don't need to do anything. So here it is from the front. And you can kind of mess around with your little loops here. There we go. And if you want to, in that coiled coil video, I then took another wire. So in this case, you can take like a 24 gauge wire and you can wrap it around this big coil um, like I did in that video. Um, I'm not going to do that here this time, but you can to make it that much more decorative, you know. So this is extra now. Cutting it. And I'm trying to take that little end, just kind of turn it, trying to get it out of the way, basically. Maybe kind of turn it this way so it'll be hidden underneath the bale. Uh, we do have this little tail end here, so before we cut it off, since it's not really secured to anything, you can go ahead and maybe wrap it a little bit around one of these two wires here. So I'm just going to wrap it around just like twice. Alright. 
<laughs> I need to grab my real pliers instead of round nose, but they're far away right now. So cutting that, you can pinch that little end down. So now this is secure both from the bottom and from the top. And now I'm going to do the same exact thing here on this side. All right, so both of the sides are done. Just did the exact same thing. And now I'm just going to do my bail. So I'm going to take these pliers, or you can take like a little pencil or something, just to shape the bail around them. And what you want to do for this next part is you want to take these two wires and these two wires here um, on the back and you want to bring them to the front like this. You don't want them to end up crossing over. So we're just bringing them to the front and you're trying to keep it close to the bale. What you want to do now with these wires, and again, this is optional. You can use just one wire of the two, or you can just secure them all to like here and cut them and be done with this pendant. But this is just like an optional little decorative design. So I am using my fingers to lay these wires down uh, because if you kind of look, there's a little bit of a gap. It's not super noticeable, but I don't want it to be noticeable at all. So I'm putting those and then I'm getting to this end here and I'm bending them to the back so now they stay the wires stay there um, and then here on the back here I'll finish this side before doing the other side all you have to do is trim them short and take some round nose pliers and curl them under with your round nose pliers. And that's it. Now that they're curled, you don't feel that sharp edge anymore and they're secure. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing here on this side. And once I cut these, I will be done with my pendant here. And same thing on this side, just curling these with my brown nose pliers. So here's what the back looks like of the finished piece. Um, you can see I made these little bends here. I was just trying to get them, get like these um, up here where these wires cross. I was just trying to get that to be like all even and nice so I was using my pliers to kind of bend these a little um, if you want you can almost bend them in like a decorative way or if your stone isn't feels like it's wobbly you can bend them to make the stone hold better but there we go and that mine a little more so here's the back now and here's the front um, let me see here and the pendant is pretty much finished. I want these wires to lie just a little flatter in here. This side is just a little, sticks out a little more than the other side. So, I mean, mess around with it, do some finishing touches, but that is pretty much it. So that is it. Here's the finished piece. I am gonna oxidize it, so I will show you guys what that looks like oxidized. I do a video on how to oxidize rock copper. You can also oxidize silver as long as it's not coated with like anti-tarnish stuff. So here is what the pendant looks like after the copper had been oxidized. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!